In this video, I am giving you 15 different tips that you are not going to want to miss when visiting the safari park. What's up guys? I'm Chelsea and you're watching my channel, Chelsea Explores. Thanks so much for being here. Now let's get into the video. Starting with number 15. If you buy a membership to the San Diego Zoo, you actually get access to the safari park. And same goes the other way. If you buy a membership to the safari park, you get access to the zoo. With those memberships, you're gonna get discounts on food, gifts, and anything in the park except alcohol. Mom and I were suckers for the gift store and we got a cute little bag. We both got one matching. There are multiple different levels of memberships, so make sure to take a look online ahead of time, see what you, one you wanna get. San Diego residents, you do get a discount if you can prove that you live in San Diego. If you're looking for the best restaurant to eat at in the park, it is through this Kajami Overlook area, and it's called the Watering Hole Restaurant. It is known to be the best restaurant in the safari park because it overlooks all the African plains. Unfortunately, it's closed right now, so we were gonna check it out for you guys, but we were unable to do that. Tip number 13, don't miss out on the cheetah run. It only happens once a day. It's located near this African side of the park, and this is where you and your kids can watch how fast a cheetah can run, and it's pretty dang fast. Tip number 12 is there are actually some hidden gems in here, even at some botanical gardens. There are more than 1,500 individual plants representing 500 species, all of which historically call Southern California home, which is super awesome because we are in a drought right now, so we want those native plants here at our park that will thrive well. Moving on to tip number 11, you're gonna wanna plan to spend an entire day here. This place is huge. It's over 1,800 acres, and compared to the San Diego Zoo, which is only 100 acres, you're gonna get your steps in. Well, make sure to allow yourself that full day to explore the safari park. If you're looking for a little bit less crowded time to visit, if you are visiting during the school year, the school field trips tend to end at 2 p.m. So if you're looking for a less crowded time with less kids, then come after 2 p.m. Okay, so tip number 10 for you when visiting the safari park is to reapply your sunscreen. This place has minimal amounts of shade. Thankfully, I've found some shade in the beautiful lagoon area but you're gonna wanna reapply that sunscreen. Make sure to put it on your face in the morning, all over your body. Now, you're gonna be taking lots of photos and videos of not only the cute little animals, but of course, you and your loved ones that you're here with. So tip number nine is to bring a rechargeable battery and some cords to charge up all your electronics. Maybe some extra SD cards for a camera if you are using that. Tip number eight, bring your own food and snacks because everything is expensive here the food is very expensive fun little tip is that they refill your water bottles for you so if you want to bring a reusable water bottle that is a great way to save on some money and stay hydrated during the day and we are almost halfway through our list so tip number seven for you is to plan according to weather I am currently here in the middle of June it's about 85 degrees out and it is a hot day if you are here with kids I recommend bringing a portable fan and I always recommend bringing a light jacket because there's shade you don't know how late you're gonna stay here and it can get cold so a light jacket is necessary tip number six for you is that there are actually several animal encounters that you can head into one of my favorites being the lorikeet landing where you can have birds land on your arm as you feed them. This enclosure is actually closed currently due to COVID. However, there are several other areas that you can head into, like the petting zoo. Do be aware that you cannot take strollers into these areas, so you will need to park them outside, but don't worry because there's plenty of stroller parking. Now, tip number five is a little bit questionable. A lot of people recommend that you head straight to the tram first because this can get very crowded in the afternoon, especially on the weekends. However, if you are looking for an alternative route, I would actually recommend heading up to the Australian area first because it's all uphill and then you can relax on the tram at the end of the day. Tip number four is to arrive early to the safari park. You're going to want to spend all day here, so the earlier the better. There's more shade in the morning, plus the animals are a little more active in the morning because this is their feeding time. So tip number four, arrive early. And if you're interested in seeing the best, most efficient route to get you around the entire park, then click this link here and check out my video on the best way to experience the safari park. We are getting to our final tips here. Tip number three is that you need to grab a map when entering the park. This park is huge, so you definitely wanna grab a map. They actually do have an app as well where there's a map 
on the app. It does drain your battery and sometimes it's just more fun to look at a physical map. Tip number two that I'm gonna give you today is that parking is not free at the safari park. It is at the zoo, but at the safari park, you have to pay $15 to park here. However, if you have a membership, some of those memberships do include free parking. So if you are considering buying one and considering coming to the safari park, then check out which memberships include that parking. If you have made it this far, we have made it to my number one tip for the best thing that you can do when coming to the safari park, and that is to wear comfortable shoes. Now I don't know that sounds pretty simple, but it is gonna make the world different. There is so much walking that you're gonna do here at the safari park. You're gonna wanna have comfortable shoes. I recommend tennis shoes. My personal favorite that I wore all over Europe for three months while pregnant, walking 20,000 steps a day is all birds. They are merino wool, which is intended to keep your foot either cool when it's hot out or warm when it's cold out. So that is the perfect type of shoe you're gonna wanna have out here at the Safari Park. Plus, they're comfortable, they're pretty cute, and they are made for all day walking. So I'm gonna link it in the description box below which shoe I personally recommend. Here is a little bonus tip for you. If you are visiting San Diego from afar and don't have a stroller or wheelchair with you, they do rent these here at the very front of the park. So make sure to look out for that. And that is it. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching another video on Chelsea Explores. We will see you again next week for another fun exploration. Bye.